Welcome back. Today we're going to be using the annotate tool inside of Blender for sculpting. So let's go ahead and do new file general and let's save it as and we'll just call it annotate and let's set up Suzanne for sculpting. Just do mat caps just to get in the habit and multi resolution and we'll subdivide a few times and let's swap on over into sculpt mode with control tap down and let's go all the way to the very, very, very bottom. Good job, we've done it. We've gone over every single brush and tool and gizmo and face set all inside of Blender. So good job so far. Let's do some doodling. So this is the annotate. And if you click and drag, notice there's a little triangle. So you can click and drag and there's different types of annotation pencils we can use, but let's just leave it on annotate. And notice up at the top, it says placement for your annotations. And annotations just means lines or doodlies or squiggly squabs, anything you want to call them. And so we'll take the placement and do 3D cursor, which is just going to kind of base that, you know, our 3D cursor is right in the center of Suzanne's head there. So it's going to kind of just, you know, as we draw, it's going to kind of just base everything from that 3D cursor point. So, you know, I don't really like to use that one as much, but that's one. So that is your 3D cursor. And that will be this color here. And we can even make a new annotation right here. And let's do that one with view. So that one's just going to draw from your plane of view here. And it's just gonna stay no matter which way you look around. And maybe we wanna change the color. So we can click on the color. And then that's the one annotation that is connected with the view placement. So notice no matter which way you're looking, you're always going to see that little squig bully squabbly right there. So maybe if there's something you need to do that, you can use this just for that when you're sculpting. And the one I like the most is surface. And this one's really cool because it actually draws on the surface. So let's go ahead and make a new annotation layer. And let's maybe make the color a little different. Let's do like green. And so since it's on surface, when we draw on it, it's actually gonna draw on the surface of Suzanne. And sometimes, we've got this big box right here. So sometimes it's good just to turn that off while you're doing your annotations. So we could come in here and say, hey, you know, we wanna make some some wrinkles on Suzanne's head over here. And then, you know, kind of use it as a, a way to pre-plan some of your drawing. I'm just gonna turn these other annotations off for just a second. So you can do that just by clicking those little eyeballs there. And now notice, as we look around, you can still see through uh, Suzanne's, like the annotations are coming through, but they're sticking to her forehead. So you could just be like, you know, we're gonna maybe turn our symmetry on. We're gonna do some wrinkles around here, maybe around, maybe put some gills right here. <laughs> um, you know, maybe we want hair coming out of the ears. So you can, you know, do things like that. You could do, you know, all these different things. Uh, but notice it did not actually do the symmetry. I thought it would, but it did not. So you'd have to do this all by hand. But this could be a good way to just kind of pre-plan your sculpting. And you can always, you know, turn them on and off. So that's one way you can use the annotate while sculpting. Another cool thing is you've got your annotate line. So if you just click and drag, you will make little lines. And you can click and drag and draw another line somewhere else and click and drag and just draw lines all over the place. You can also click and drag onto the surface and it will stick to the surface. So if you're like, oh, I need this part, you know, right here to be more square. There's somewhere in here, you know, all this needs to be like place for some sideburns. You know, that would put that onto that. And then we could also use the annotate polygon. So this one's going to be similar to the line annotate, but it's actually not gonna end. So you can just click and then click again, and that's going to make a line. But notice when you click some other place over here to the right, it's just gonna continue that line. So it's just making like one continuous mesh and they're not really snapping to each other. So I want you to try this, you know, just try like, you know, bringing all the edges together. Notice we could come over here, maybe come over here. So I'm just gonna make like a little 3D box. Boom, so now I just made a cube, uh, but it was all just, 
you know, some polygons. So that's just something you can do with the polygon line tool. It's just going to stay together. And then you can just hit enter when you're ready to start a new one. And that will let you begin your next one. And the last one we can use is the annotate eraser. And that's going to do just what it sounds like. It's just going to start erasing annotation lines just depending on, you know, where the, the starting points are. So just click and hit this little starting points of it, the little dots, almost like the vertices of them, and they will disappear. So that is how you can get rid of different annotations. Or you could always go into one of the annotations and go down here and subtract them as well. So, all right. So that is all for the annotate tool. Let's go ahead and jump into the next lesson.